What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another installment of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. My name is Anthony Walker, and on today's show, we're going to talk two things, ladies and gentlemen. One, two. Stomping ground. We'll talk about that. We'll let you into something right now. I've already tried to do this. It didn't work out that well. So we're going to do stomping ground. We are also going to do talk about WWE's UK content where it's going to be for the for, for upcoming because it's not going to be on sky sports for very long so i'm going to reveal that at the, in the show as well so with that being said though ladies and gents let's get to the f- right there we go right we cancel that let's get to stomping ground it was an okay show okay that's all I can say. It's okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't tremendous. But it wasn't bad. It was okay. Uh, I didn't know this because I didn't see the I didn't see the uh, kickoff show. Not that I watched the kickoff show anyway. Um, I wanted, I watched. Uh, I found out that Drew Gulak is now the new cruiserweight champion. Why don't they have that on the show on the pre-show? Seriously? Mind you saying that there was a lot of matches on there tonight that could have been that were main, that were main carpet material but you know I don't know why they put I don't know why they have the cruiserweight division all they do is put on the pre show. But Drew Gulak is your new champion. Kira Tozawa and Tony Nice were the competitors. He won it in a triple threat match. I didn't see it, but I just know he won. Becky and Lacey Evans kicked off the show. Good way to kick off the show for the women's title, Raw Women's title. It's a good way to kick off. Wasn't that impactful for me. Lacey put up a good fight. I'll give her credit. She took the champ to the limit. Um, but what favoured me about this match was the way she tapped out quickly. And I'm talking Lacey Evans. Lacey made a mistake. Lacey made a mistake. Obviously, Becky capitalised on it, put her into the side, and she tapped out quickly. You've got Corey Graves on commentary, clown face on commentary, saying, oh, it was smart to do that. No, it wasn't. At least put up a fight. You don't have to be in the hold so long. And it wasn't smart, considering it was the Women's Championship, for Christ's sake. Women's title on the line. However, however, though, and I will say this, however, thankfully, Becky's still the Women's Champion. So she is still the man as well, which I'm very happy about. A very, very weird Mustafa Ali, or Ali as he's now known, promo came up. A very weird one. And then Paul Heyman and Paul came out and talked about Lesnar and talked about... And then Corbin popped out and he got booed. But the minute Lesnar, the minute Lesnar's name was spoken... was done he got booed out the bill and that was in Daniel Bryan's hometown by the way the surprise of the night for me in my opinion the surprise of the night for me in my opinion was the tag team match Sami Zayn and Owens facing the New Day Big E and Kevin and uh, Xavier Woods I almost said Kevin Woods there Xavier Woods it was actually a surprise of the night because I actually thought this was going to be like a simple tag team that you'd probably see on SmackDown or Raw. You know, it was actually pretty good. They kicked off hard. They got rid of Big E and just beat and Zayn and Owens. They just beat the hell out of Xavier Woods. Kevin hit Swanton for crying out loud. Swanton bomb Kevin Owens. Are you kidding me? They took him out. They took Big E out. They just kept on beating and beating and beating and beating. They hit every move. They hit the finishes, the signature moves on Woods. He just wouldn't die. He just wouldn't get in. And then Big E finally gets tagged in, shows his power, would show some power. He had Big E on his shoulders. The beating he took in the match, he literally had Big E on his shoulders and then Big E did the splash on, I believe it was Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn, it was one of them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great tag match. Big E speeds Sami through the, you know, went through the ropes and speeds Sami off the apron and everything. Just 
I'm amazed he doesn't kill people with that one, but to be honest with you, but anyway. And then Woods gets stunned and Owens and uh, Zayn get the victory. And yes, Kevin Owens has been using the stunner because I have been told that Kevin Owens is has been blessed to use the stunner by Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's basically handed over one. In what was a great match as well, UK, US title, Ricochet and Samoa Joe. Joe's powers are matched in this one. I mean, he literally beat the hell out of him at the start of the match. Absolutely beat the crap out of him. And then Ricochet couldn't even get a break in the fight. And then there was one point in the match, uh, Joe German suplex him, breaks him in half. He's like, roll through, gets back on his feet again, Ricochet, and then Joe just like clones lands him and flips him all over. Perfect. Absolutely perfect to do. Um, a great match. Quickness and speed against power and speed, quite frankly. And, uh, yeah, I was quite happy they pulled the plug because they allowed Ricochet to be the champion. So Ricochet beat Samoa Joe clean and became the United States heavyweight champion. And I was very pleased with that because I didn't think... I predicted... I, I, I hoped at some point that Ricochet would win, but he didn't. And he did. I was thinking Joe was going to get the belt and just go on with it. You know, they were going to keep the belt on him. Two matches that were near, you know, whatever. Uh, heavy Machinery and Daniel Bryan. Credit to Heavy Machinery. They, they did well against Bryan and Rowan for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, but, you know, it was some good points in the match and everything. Heavy Machinery using their power. The, one of them had him up in the suplex and then passed him over to his partner. When have I seen that before? But we all knew at the end, it was two predictable matches, quite frankly, because we all knew at the end that Brian and uh, Rowan were going to retain the belts in this match. I mean, I knew it as well. I didn't, I didn't expect Heavy Machinery to work out the tag belt. And same with uh, Bliss and um, Bailey. Yes, Bliss and Bailey. Bliss worked on the arm on Bailey as well during the match as well. It was a pretty good match for what it was. Bailey did a sunset flip in the corner. And threw. It was like a sunset flip, and B Bliss went right back on the turnbuckle. It was tremendous. I've never seen anything like that one before. Um, then Nikki Cross distracted. She was trying to help Alexa Bliss, but she distracted Alexa Bliss, who was on the top, trying to get her and you know, help her out and everything. And it cost her the match, and then Bailey wins the title. Nothing big in them two matches, quite frankly. They talked about the 24-7 title. Do I have to talk about that? I fucking hate that belt. I really do. You know, what happened on SmackDown when uh, Maverick jumped truth to win the title and then they had truth win the belt back at maverick's wedding that's right and then apparently there's all this thing going on on twitter and he's now wife has asked for a divorce and everything i don't know what turned into the best day of his life turned into the worst day of his life quite frankly and i don't think he'll show his face on 215 for, for a week but i, I fucking hate Hate, hate the two the twenty four seven title. I'm sorry, I fucking despise it. Anyway, Ricochet was a doing a photo of his U.S. title and walked in the club. Gallows and Anderson wanted to get the belts. There was no harm done, no 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 beef or anything like that. They just won the photo with a champion, congratulating him. Styles walked in. Turned around and basically got the photo of him and everything, which was sweet, and then and said to him, I'll see you tomorrow night on Raw. Ricochet, AJ Styles, tomorrow night on Raw for the US title, maybe. If it is, I will watch Raw just to watch that match. Because that match is going to be off the chain. Anyway, Raw, Roman Reigns and McIntyre, it was a carbon copy of um, a points in the match. It was a carbon copy of uh, Showdown. Show. When Shane was facing Roman, Drew got involved. Drew versus Roman, Shane got involved. I mean, the fought, they were brawled, hard hitting stuff and everything, and then Shane got involved. Drew was in control until a suplex counter and everything, and then it just turned into it. And then I think uh, Roman, if I remember correctly, hit him with a Superman punch. Shane comes in, gets flown out the ring, and then. Drew gets hit with a spear and then wins the match. And Shane and Drew were pissed after the match because 
basically Shane said that it's going to be him and Drew against Roman Reigns tomorrow night. I'm rolling a two on one handicap match. <laughs> so we move into Kofi and Dolph for the WWE Championship. I have never understood why they don't have a one on one match, like a, ca a cage match. Instead of having cage match, pinfall, and submission, and going over the top, why can't they have a cage match which is pinfall and submission? I've never understood that. Never understood that. You know, I definitely have them on, on WWE 2K19 and 2K and 2 2 k 20 You know, I've never really understood that. It's fascinating for that. But I, they should do it. Triple H, if you're watching, you should do it. Um, but yeah, it was a hard-hitting match. A lot better than their match at uh, Showdown. Even though most of, the ma most of the stuff tonight was from the build-up. I mean, Showdown was the build-up to this match. The pay-per-view, quite frankly. Hard-hitting match. Dolph wanted a tap-out. He wanted that tap-out. He was working that ankle to the point. With the ankle lock and everything. He really wanted that tap out. And then the ending was tremendous. Because Dolph's on his back. He rakes Kofi in the eyes. And then kicks him away. The door's open. All, I, all Dolph had to do was crawl out. Crawl out, crawl out, crawl out. He's about to go to the apron. The apron area. And he's about to crawl to the outside. Kofi does like a plunger right through the door. Between the middle and top middle rope. Does a plunge like if he's diving on somebody and just dives to the outside and wins. Genius. Absolute genius. Never saw that before. Never, ever, ever saw that before. Until now. Just genius. Absolute genius. And then Jane, Shane Drew were pissed and everything and the two on one handicap match. But yes, Kofi is still your WWE champion. The referee for the. Universal title match because Seth was all business. He came out and chased and demanded to know who the referee was, and it was Lacey Evans. And it just went on from there basically, two on one handicap match, quite frankly. Because Corbin hit him with a chair, normally that'd be a disqualification. It wasn't. It was a great match through all the bullshit because they did. I mean, these two could work a match, good, a good match as well. She was slow on the count. Corbin got powerbomb through an announce table, which was great. Um, Lacey did not count after the frog splash. Frog splash, he hit by Seth. One, two, no. Uh, Lacey didn't count. And at that point, I tell you this right now, I was getting frustrated myself. And at that point, I was just begging Seth to turn around and just super kick her in the mouth. <laughs> I was begging. I was like, Seth, just super kick her, dude. Just do it. The bear and beat down continued and then Seth had the opportunity to hit him with a... He um, did a falcon hour on the chair, but Lacey didn't count. And then everything happened after that. Seth confronted Lacey. Lacey hit him with a low blow after he tried to attack Seth. Uh, tried to go for Byron. Lacey hit him with a low blow. And then Super Becky to the rescue. The women's champion comes out and takes her out. Because boyfriend and girlfriend... The women's champion comes out and takes her out. Just beats the living dog out of her on the outside. Fucking Corey Graves with his bullshit fucking commentary. He is such an idiot. He really is an absolute idiot. He sucks on commentating. I'm sorry. I don't care what anyone says. He is bad on commentating. Okay? You might want to reconsider. Put him on one show because the fact that he's on both shows, that's too much for me. I just think this, that this guy used to be good on NXT. When he was on NXT, he was actually good on NXT. He sucks now. Awful commentator. I mean, that's why many young said, go and start the car. Because of all his BS and everything. And he, was, he literally blamed the ref again for the um, thing. He was so bad. I don't care if he's got somebody in his ear. He was so bad. And if he's got somebody in his ear, he needs to be a man, grow a set, walk to the back, find the guy who's doing it, and just slap him right in the mouth. But at the end of the day, it's probably Vince, isn't it? Although Vince is probably in Coles here. But come on. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And then when Becky eventually got rid of Lacey, super kick on on Corbin and then the stomp. And then the referee, the same ref, count on Super Showdown. That was my, that was referee in the Super Showdown. He counted the fall. Got the one, two, three. Rollins is still your universal champion. And him and Becky had a good little moment at the end. Which I'm a little jealous of because I'm a Becky fan and I love me some Becky Lynch. But at least they walk out with the championships and there was no Brock Lesnar. 
all this hype about Brock Lesnar being the special guest referee for the fight and everything, just to get it uh, Rollins and that, there was no Brock Lesnar, which was quite frankly probably a happy thought, quite frankly. It was actually pretty good, like I say. I believe that this had Triple H's fingerprints on, and I read a comment on Facebook saying that it did have Triple H's fingerprints on. Was that the truth? I don't know. But uh, thank the good Lord it did. That's all I can say. If it did, that's because it was actually a pretty good show. Pretty well worked, good show. So, with that being said, nothing else needs to say about that one. I hope you guys enjoyed Stomping Ground. But I want to talk quickly before I leave about WWE's future in the UK. It will not be on Sky Sports anymore. The days of it being on Sky Sports will be done at the end of the year. Because, I'll turn me off in a minute for a second, guys. Nope, wrong one. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I actually forgot. I haven't put it on, guys. <laughs> uh, add to the uh, clowny one. Right, I've just seen it. I know it's up here somewhere. I know it's around here somewhere. WWE's uh, future. Whoa. As far as showing wrestling, the WWE content on there will no longer be existence because, as you can clearly see here, guys, starting January 2020, WWE's new home will be BT Sport in the UK. Now, I question one logic about this. Is this really going to work considering the way WWE's main roster is at the moment? I don't know. But I also question this. It says they're BT Sport and BT Sport box office. That means they're probably still going to show the pay-per-views on the box office. I think BT might want to rethink that. Yes, keep Raw and SmackDown on the BT Sport network and everything like that. That's fine. But this is the reason why the reason why they've moved over to BT Sport and left Sky is because of the thing. It's, it's the pay-per-view. It's because of the network. Because WWE have their network and that's where all the pay-per-views go. Sky Sports hated that. That's why there was a delay on the network in the first place. I mean, let's face it. In the UK based, I don't know what it's like in America, probably 30, 40 quid a week, a month. But in the UK based, it was 40, 15 pound to 21 pound for a pay-per-view on box office. That versus 10.99 on the network. I said this on my opening my uh, comeback show eh? you work it out that wins every time hell I used to buy 15 to 21 to 21 pound pay-per-views I never bought 20 pound pay-per-views they did up the ante on the on the prices with the pay-per-views at one point which allowed me to walk away because they did put Royal Rumble up to 20 pound it usually was 14 pound or 15 pound a month for the pay-per-views which I didn't have a problem with but when it went up to 20, that was it. And I was going to go anyway because of the network. I mean, like I say, 15 to 21 pound, 10.99. That's all I'm saying on that one, guys. So from that point on, guys, I think they're wasting the time with the pay-per-views. But BT Sport will be hosting WWE UK. Um, it will be the UK home for WWE starting January 2020. So will it work? I hope so. Um, apparently, BT Sport goes into 2 million homes um, as well, or over 2 million homes, so we'll see what happens. So if you want BT Sport, guys, if you want to see WWE action and you don't get the network, get BT Sport from 2020 onwards. And make the most of it on Sky Sports, guys, because it'll be gone very, very soon. So, with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this podcast or listening to this podcast or checking this podcast out in any way, shape, or form you, you may be or whatever it is you are doing. It has been an absolute pleasure, guys. My name is Anthony Walker. And, uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the... As well, this is my second podcast, guys. So, basically, I've pretty much done a good 45 minutes if you combine the two because... Uh, yeah, I did a podcast this week celebrating, well, 
just paying my respects to Lionheart, who tragically passed away this past week as well. So, yeah. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I will be back. If I can try and get back this week, I'll try and be back this week for another podcast. If not, I'll be back the same time as next week as well. So we'll see what happens, guys. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. And hopefully next week as well, I'll let you know on my website um, as well next week, hopefully. But uh, we'll see how that pans out and everything. I've got a few things I need to do this week. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is at the end of the day. So we'll see what happens, guys. Uh, until then, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, wherever you may be. My name is Anthony Walker, and I'll see you next time. Peace out. Thank you, and goodbye. And there it is, guys. New home, WWE from 2020. BT Sport. So, until next time, guys, I am done. Thank you, and goodbye.